two, one, go. As the autonomous starts, Cobalt Colts get a quick score of a cone onto that low junction point. They've picked up another one. They're looking to get it on the high, but no, the spring was bouncing a little too much for them to find that second score. Drivers, pick up your controllers. Three, two, one. As the teleoperated mode starts, we've got Team Cerberus for the Red Alliance. They've lined up. They're trying to secure a cone onto that high junction point. Not to be outdone, though. Cobalt Colts answers back with one in kind. Team Storm. Has a red alliance cone. They're looking to line up a placement on this ground area in the terminal. Cobalt Colts just putting cycle after cycle on these high terminals. That'll be good for five points each time they find it. Red alliance Cerberus. Has a cone in hand. They're looking to build this circuit together with their alliance partner, Storm. They're going to place one on this middle junction point and help build this to completion. Meanwhile, on the blue alliance, we've got Team SEK Robotics placing a cone inside their terminal. That'll be good for a point and help build a circuit of their own. 70, 95, lines up a cone and has now taken control of another junction point for the Red Alliance. <laughs> Off from a full circuit, as 30 seconds left in the match, teams are now able to play their end game. They have access to those beacons. The Blue Alliance will drop a beacon as well as a cone to take control of what was predominantly a red alliance before Cobalt Colts place another <laughs> the match is Four Mustangs, 11 457 Starbots, and 21 677 CTEEC Cerberus. Again, we need teams for qualification match number five to bring their robots to the field. Red Alliance, that's 90 34 and 14 919. Blue Alliance, that's 11 457 and 21 677. Coming in for qualification match number four. It is going to be the Blue Alliance winning with a score of 117 to 77. It was a close match up until the end game.